Hey guys, before we get into the promised Q and A's, I want to give you guys an update on my cement marker. Okay, so it's been about six days and this is still fresh. So I think it was a success. The only thing that I did notice that you have to be careful for is when you uh, apply the cement, I got some some color from the back of this of this material, which is uh, you know this orange. I don't know what it's called, the Napa leather. So some of that came off, got stuck on the felt, and rubbed off. After that, I applied it to some white material, and it got uh, some of the orange onto the white. But uh, other than that, everything's good. I mean, you can you can see it's still coming out. So yeah, I think overall it was a success. I think I am going to use this more. And uh, go watch my last video if you're not sure how to make one of these. And see what I'm saying? Some of that stuff gets left over on the on the tip there, but you get some bleeding on the sides. Not a big deal. But the important thing is it is airtight, and this did keep it fresh for about six days that I was gone. So, all right, option for you guys: Montana refillable acrylic marker. All right, so let's get on to our Q and A's. Okay, so the first question comes from Mick Mousey, and he says, "Can you use a vinyl transfer for the wings?" Okay, uh, so yes, you can. I imagine he's talking about the HTV heat transfer vinyl. You probably have a Cricut or a Silhouette or one of those vinyl cutters at home, and the answer is yes, you can use it. But it just depends on the leather. If it has a glossy finish. You're gonna wanna, you know, maybe put some acetone, take off that clear finish on top. Um, it also depends on the vinyl. Some vinyl is uh, made for, you know, outdoor use or, you know, something like that. Uh, some, some vinyl is gonna require a higher temperature. And when you're talking about higher temperatures, if you have some kind of material like an exotic, you know, a python or something, you put that in the heat press and it's just gonna, it's gonna burn it. I mean, it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna look good. So you can, it just depends on the materials. You can try it out. I've got a couple of, um, I think if you look at my Travis Scott's, the uh, the Miami themed ones, I did some heat transfer vinyl on that, the uh, little Cactus Jack logo. Um, but anyways, yes you can. Next question. Next question comes from DM. He says, I bought patterns from you, but you have but you have updated them since. Should I repurchase them? Do you offer a deal for rebuying patterns? So unfortunately, no, we don't offer a deal. Um, email us, depending on how long ago you purchased them, we will work with you. I know it's you know it's messed up if you uh, purchase a pattern and a couple of days later we come out with a new one. Um, but yeah, we're always improving our patterns. I mean. There's so many people out there, you know, that copy us and resell them. I'm sure you guys have seen some or, or know of somebody. But that's one of the reasons we keep updating them and improving them. All right. So if, if it's been, you know, within the last couple weeks or so, and you notice there's a new pattern out, just send us a DM or an email and we'll get you a new pattern out. Um, other than that, yeah, sorry. You got to buy a new one. This next one comes from Shia and she says, where do you buy your leathers and liners? So a bunch of different places. Um, there's just depends. Uh, liners. I mean, if you want calf, there's Orion Calf, uh, District Leather Supply in Colorado. They're good people. You could buy from them. And uh, United Leather. They have the plonge that a lot of people like. It just depends. So United Leather, even Tandy Leather, District Leather Supply, Pan Am Leathers. Those are all good sources. Um, this next one says, what are the, what are the alternatives to spending hundreds or dollars on last and patterns? I'm looking forward to disassemble a shoe and make a pattern out of it. But what about the, the last? Well, really there are no alternatives to a last. I think, uh, if you try to make a shoe without a last, it's, it's not going to be pretty. I mean, it's going to kind of collapse on itself. 
The reason we have the last is because all the leather, when you stretch it or when you manipulate it, it's going to try and come back to its original shape. But if you don't have a last on there for at least 24 hours, it's, it's going to you know move on you. So that's why we keep it on the last for 24 hours and it retains that shape forever. Um, but yeah, I don't think there are any alternatives to uh, not using a last. If you want to deconstruct and make your own pattern, yeah, that's easy. You can uh, take the pieces apart. You can use a seam ripper. Use uh, you know one of these things. Take all the seams off. Cut every single part. Trace it, or you know, I'm trying to look for a part here. Sorry guys. Anyways, take apart every single piece of the shoe. You take it apart and you copy it onto paper, you trace it, and then you add your allowances for the seams, for the lasting, for whatever. Um, you can do that. Another way is just masking tape. Take masking tape over each piece of the shoe. You can draw it or cut it out and then put that masking tape onto paper, like a poster board or cardboard. Then you cut that cardboard out, you add your allowances for all the, the, the seams around it and the lasting allowance, and that's it that's another method so no you can't I don't think you should do it without a last you can make a pattern by deconstructing the entire shoe part by part or by masking it off part by part all right um, X sniper says thanks for all the awesome videos and great patterns I don't have any questions but I just wanted to share gratitude for how helpful you've been through my first build I appreciate that sniper I try I try to get back to the community um, Robert says, I love this guy. You mentioned about the classes, but I didn't see any info in the link. Uh, I don't know. Talk to my media guy, my <laughs> marketing guy. He's in charge of all that, but he, uh, yeah, well, I'll make sure there's a link somewhere. I mean, I think if you Google us, you can find us. Um, Costa says, where do you buy the lasting boards? Anything that can be used as an alternative? Lasting boards, yes. I buy them wholesale. Uh, in the Midwest, there's a company called Linflex. I think it's L-Y-N-N, -N, or one N or two Ns. Linflex, they're very nice people. It's an older couple, but um, I just like, I'm, I'm sure I can get it cheaper somewhere else, but I like supporting their business. They seem like a really nice uh, family, the family-owned business there, and they can actually, you buy the entire sheet, which is, I think, four by... I don't know, eight sheet, and they cut it up into smaller pieces so they can ship it to a residential address. So if you want to buy wholesale, I would do that. Other than that, I mean, there's other, many other cheap places you can buy on Etsy or um, in LA. There's a lot of shoe shops out there, you know, Soderma, Avetico, and we'll put links to those somewhere around there. Arson says, what kind, what machine do you use slash provide for your students? So machines for the students, every student will get to use the Atlas 815 model, which is a single needle post bed, and you'll have it to yourself so you get plenty of time to learn how to use it. Um, we do have other machines here that you're welcome to use. Um, I do teach everybody how to do all of this by hand. If you want to learn how to sky by hand, if you want to learn how to stitch the sole on by hand, I'll show you how to do all that. But we do have a heat press, a skying machine. Uh, sole stitching machine, um, all that's available to the students. Um, Muhammad says the result is awesome. Can, the result is awesome. Can you make a video for your toolkit? I really want to buy one, but I need more information, more details, and explanation. Anyway, thank you and keep up the good work. All right, so Muhammad, thank you for the question. We do have a toolkit here. Um, our toolkit. So our toolkit. It's going to come in a bag. Sorry, this is the one I use here. It's dirty. But you will get a bag. You will get a stitch awl. This will come with a needle. This needle is called the needle, needle jerk size 6. This is going to be to stitch the sole. The side sole. Uh, side walls, I'm sorry. A sanding sponge. Sorry, these are used. These are, this is a toolkit that I have that I use here, but I want to show you guys. You're going to get a sanding sponge, which is just, uh, you know, a fine, great sanding sponge. A utility knife that we use to cut leathers or patterns. A seam ripper 
take apart seams. You're gonna get four, four of these magic heat erase pens, red, black, blue, and white, and one silver marking pen. You will get a Sharpie, which I don't have here, but you'll get a Sharpie and a pencil. You'll get a compass to help you guys make patterns. You will get tape measure. You will get some uh, crepe eraser. This is used to take off the old glue. Once the glue dries, it comes off very easily with this. You will not get a lighter. You'll get a scratch all. This is used for marking leather, for taking threads out, for a lot of things. Scratch all. Thread snippers. You will get a small hammer, which I don't have here. Nope, don't have a small hammer here, which is just a basic claw hammer. Uh, you'll get some a little tin with lasting nails. You'll get some lasting pliers, very basic lasting pliers with the hammer and the thin, thin, uh, I don't know, thin, the, the thin one. There's some other thicker ones, but I like these thin ones. You can get in between the, the nails a little bit better. And they also have a nail remover here. So you get the lasting pliers, and finally you will get a safety beveler. This is a skiver. I personally, I like, to, I prefer to skive with this knife, but some people they prefer the safety skiver. So we'll get the safety skiver, and it comes with some extra blades. All right, what else? Uh, you'll get a for the class. You'll get a notepad. And I believe that's it. That's our toolkit. And you can pretty much make a shoe with what you have here and some glue. When I throw in some glue, I should throw in some glue in the toolkit. That's a good idea. Some glue. You need a sewing machine and even a basic tabletop flat grandma, grandpa sewing machine. That's all you need to make a shoe. And the last, of course. Anyways, this is our toolkit. All right, thanks for the question, Mom. She again says, what part of the process do you attach the heel counter and how would you do it? Uh, what part of the process? So it's it'll depend on how you're constructing the shoe. I happen to have one here, for example. This is a dunk high and I just attach the liner, the back, uh, the heel liner to the upper. So it all depends if I'm gonna do this all at once, meaning I'm going to glue my foam on, glue my heel counter right here, then I would close this, and then I would do a security stitch all around here, right underneath the, uh, the, seam, the uh, allowance line there, the registration mark. I would stitch it here and close it off with my heel counter already in here. But if I'm going to do, if I'm going to last the liner first, which is a more, uh, um, I don't know, artisanal way of doing it, or old school, where uh, they would actually finish the whole shoe, and then they last the liner first. Then after you last the liner, this is on the last, sorry, I can't. This would be on the last, and then you just flip this up. You would flip this up. You would attach your heel counter, and then you would flip this back down. And then last this. So it just depends which uh, which way you're doing it. Um, easiest way is just once you do this, attach your liner, put your foam in, put your heel counter in, glue it down, and stitch this closed. Just close all this, and then you're only lasting once. I have a twin needle sewing machine similar to yours. I was wondering wondering if I could use it as a single needle. Then I saw you take a needle out. Awesome. Now I don't have to buy a single needle. Yeah, I mean, there are there aren't many. The only real drawback of having a double needle versus a single needle is that the post is a little bit thicker because it has the two bobbin casings. So instead of having one bobbin, and one needle, you have two bobbins, two needles. So it's a little bit. The post is a little bit thicker, but it, I mean, it doesn't affect me at all. And yeah, I've gotten pretty good at going from one needle back to two needles, one needle to. I mean, you. Um, I don't know if you saw my video, just put a little magnet on your machine and just keep the needles there. Easy access, you know. 
you get good at it, you switch needles pretty fast, and uh, it works the same. So yeah, I'm glad you were able to uh, save on buying a single needle. All right, guys, so that was it for our q and I appreciate everybody. Again, thank you, 1,000 subscribers, thank you. And uh, please don't forget to like and comment. And next shoe. What, okay, so we got some uh, some options for next shoe. I'm going to make another video, but this time the next video I make, I'm going to make it only using the toolkit I sell here and a little tabletop machine, a little, you know, the one I said, the grandma sewing machine. I'm going to use that and my toolkit, and I'm going to show you guys how to make a shoe. We have either the Travis Scott Low, AJ1 Low, Jordan 3, SB Dunk. It says here the winner is Jordan 3. I guess I'm making a Jordan 3. I don't know how we determine the winner, but I'm making a Jordan 3. All right. So stay tuned. We're going to make a Jordan 3.